Hello ZD Netters, I'm Ken Hess, your host for this video cast. I'm in beautiful but snowy Raleigh, North Carolina today with my guest Peter Kofod of The Sixth Flag. The Sixth Flag is a company that has created a disruptive virtual desktop product that I think is both interesting and practical. Welcome to the show, Peter. Thanks, Ken. Great to have you here. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, uh, as Ken said, my name is Pete Kofod. Um, and I've been in the technology business for 20 years. Uh, served in the consulting field and uh, worked extensively with uh, surface transportation industries uh, and transit. And uh, I've traveled quite a bit also, which will come out a little bit in the sort of the story behind the Six Flag. Uh, and the, uh, I guess the, the thing that's really sort of important in my background is that I dealt a lot with security. So what exactly is the Sixth Flag? Well, the Sixth Flag was founded on a simple premise, and that is that uh, remote workers uh, need to have access to a secure desktop that's easy to manage for system administrators and is light on the pocketbook for the CIO. So what makes it so different than traditional VDI? Well, there's really three things. Number one, uh, it is purely as a service, meaning that there is no capex associated with the C that is associated with the implementation. So customers don't have to install any premise equipment, expensive storage. They don't have to purchase any licenses. It's basically just you know an app on tap. So it's a subscription, purely subscription basis. Uh, second, it is completely uh, browser based. So there's no client. Uh, it uses pure HTML5 technology, and uh, so there's no need to have supported devices or have you know, deal with drivers or any issues like that. And then, uh, but the finally, uh, it's really sort of the the, the security component that, that we built in primarily. That that is really very very different uh, because we're geared towards remote workers. Uh, security is a key part because they tend to be targeted most for uh, for uh, malware and attacks of that kind. Sure. So if I called you up this morning and said I have 500 users spread all throughout, you know, the country and maybe even uh, in foreign countries, uh, how quickly could I get us up and running? Oh, it, the process would take a couple of hours at most, and uh, and it really depends also on your environment because we can integrate it directly into your traditional corporate environment, um, uh, including authentication, so we can authenticate against your authentication mechanism. Uh, and you know you would want to build the desktops to meet your standards, but getting you up and started is, like most software as a service, it's actually a relatively trivial process. And since you said it's browser-based, does that mean I could use my iPad as well as a Chromebook? Absolutely, Ken. Uh, you could use Chromebooks, you know, uh, iPads, you know, any kind of a tablet, uh, Mac, Linux, what have you. Uh, as long as it uses a current browser, as long as it has a current browser on it, you are in good shape. Great, so there's no uh, Java or JavaScript or uh, Flash or anything like that? No ActiveX controls, no Java, no Flash, uh, no Shockwave, no plugins of any kind are required. Uh, as long as you have what we call a current browser, it doesn't have to be at the absolute latest, but what most people would consider a current browser, meaning it has strong support for HTML5, it has support for Canvas-based technology, you're going to be, it'll work just fine. Who do you think you would consider to be your perfect customer? So, we are, seem to be gaining a lot of traction with organizations that have a distributed workforce that have uh, contract workers, seasonal workers, uh, remote workers and road warriors. Uh, they tend to be difficult to provision for. Um, in a traditional VDI environment, uh, it's actually very difficult to deploy technologies to them because often there are requirements on their desktops. It's difficult to get the equipment to them. Um, and so that becomes a real issue. And, and, and traditional VDI solutions, as good as they are, they're very good. Uh, tend to gear actually towards solving a problem that really is not the main problem, which is they provide a solution for 
uh, corporate users, organizational users, that are operating inside of the perimeter of the organization, where our solution is geared towards solving the problem of how do you deal with, you know, who we call sort of the, you know, the organizational misfits, you know, the guys that don't come in, you know, to the office, the guys that are traveling extensively, the guys that are traveling in environments that might be hostile to, to their business practices. And so that's who we're that's who we're geared towards. Is there any sort of a, a lower limit or an upper limit to the number of users you can support? Well, there's really no practical li limit, but there 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 gets there's a point at which it, the 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 return on, on on the level of effort of learning a new technology and managing it is important. So, you know, for one or two users, it's not worth it. But for ten users and above, we're certainly prepared to work with them. And there's you said there's no upper limit. So oh, there's it. certainly no upper limit. So it's totally scalable. It is because we're completely cloud-based, and uh, as, as literally, it's if you need more resources, we'll provide more resources. And how about bandwidth? Uh, is it uh, you know does it work equally well over cellular networks? It works perfectly fine over cellular networks. That's not an issue. Great. So there's no uh, lag or anything for the for the user. The only place where you will notice some lag is if you have a high latency network because it is a remote desktop solution that is being rendered locally. So if there's a lot of latency, it, the, the experience will be degraded. But over cellular networks, it it's, tends to be very, very bandwidth efficient. Um, and, and so the, we, don't, we don't see an issue as much with bandwidth as much as we do with latency. What about applications? Uh, I mean, a lot of people are using Microsoft Office, uh, something like QuickBooks, uh, Adobe products, AutoCAD, things like that. How does your solution work with those? It is a comp it, it supports a traditional Microsoft Windows desktop environment. So that's actually why it, it, we developed this solution was because a lot of organizations have a corporate desktop standard, an organizational desktop standard that must be adhered to. They have uh, legacy applications that aren't web-based. In some instances, the vendor may have gone out of business, but they have to support this uh, application because a core business function is supported by that application and they can't move it and so as a result they need to be able to deploy this application and and as a result what they're looking for is how can they do this in an efficient manner uh, that, so it's a, a full Windows desktop supported that can be managed supported uh, you know configured by the organizational administrator so manage and configure that sounds like that uh you could actually have different types of users, like administrative users and you know more technical users. Absolutely. So let's go. Let's pick an example. Say, for example, you have an organization where you need 500 users, of which maybe you know 150 of them operate in sales, 200 operate in engineering, and 50 operate in the legal department. You may have different policies for the legal department than you'd have for the engineers or the sales people. So actually what you can do is in addition to building three different desktop types with different software installed for the three groups, so the engineers might need some kind of a CAD or some kind of a design or a Microsoft Visio application, for example, whereas the legal department may need access to you know, certain types of intellectual property databases uh, and, and, and need to be able to look up those things. Those can be built into each one of those organizations, each one of those groups' desktops. On top of that, we actually apply policies outside of the desktop. So for example, if a salesperson may need to be able to have full access to enter information, extract information, print and do things like that, surf the internet and do work like that, they can do that. But say for example, the legal department is working on some very, very sensitive information. They may, for example, they may not want to have them to have internet access. They may not even want them to be able to extract information out so they can't even download data from that virtual desktop. So it can be highly restricted. In our most restricted environment, we call it our virtual clean room. And the metaphor there is the old, you know, electronic lab where there's a glass bubble and there's engineers and technicians sitting around with rubber gloves looking inside of a glass bubble looking at their technology. And they can operate on the on the data, but they can't pull it out. Well, what about management? How how does a, an IT person manage these desktops? That's probably the best part of this system. It's very, very simple. They, the organization will be given 
a, a gold master desktop that essentially is this is the the you know the version zero that they operate from. Then from there they can build out various branches and they can patch these systems through our through our web-based interface. They launch a the gold master, they do whatever patching, whatever software adds and removes they want to do. So they configure it and once they once that desktop is in the state that they want it to be, they just commit it and then they assign it to a group and now that group has that desktop. So a month from now, if they need to add software, make some changes, they basically launch that gold master again of that of that image, make whatever changes they want to do, recommit it, and now that group has that new and updated image. What about printing? That seems to be a real hitch with uh, web-based desktops and web-based applications. So the way we solve that problem is, I think we kind of cheated, but at the end of the day, I think it works best. We are not in the business of wanting to manage drivers. You know, there's it's a, it's a difficult issue even on a good day. And so instead what we do is we actually have a, a custom driver that we call our TSF driver. And what we do is we just print it to a PDF and it gets rendered as a separate document on the local on your local device as a PDF and then you can send it to your printer of choice or you can if, you, if that's what you want to do. And that way we don't have to interact with your local printing system on your device and it is rendered in, in a true and, and state with high fidelity. Interesting. So what about uh, backup recovery and disaster recovery? So with backup, with backup recovery and disaster recovery, um, your data is actually stored on a volume and you can use whatever traditional backup mechanisms you already have in the enterprise for that. In addition to that, we are in the process of deploying some additional technologies that I'm hesitant to go into on here, but basically it involves desktop level recovery for the end user. Great. Well, I think we should probably see a, a demo at this point. Okay. So Ken, uh, here we have uh, the desktop website for the Six Flag. Uh, specifically, this is the demo website. Uh, each customer has their own portal where they log in and access their desktop. So um, what we're going to go ahead and do is go ahead and log in right now. And we will log in uh, using a demo account. Uh, so just go ahead, so we'll just go ahead and type that in really quickly here. So after the control panel has loaded, we'll go ahead and click launch desktop. That takes about 30 seconds to go through the various checks. It has to check credentials, uh, check the authorizations, uh, and actually build the desktop, uh, and set up all the, and, and then add the data, the user data, and uh, map that to the instance. And then before, by the time it has done all that, then it'll go ahead and, and send the desktop to the browser. So the first thing that we'll see is a traditional Windows desktop. And uh, as you can see right here, here's the desktop. Let's go ahead and get rid of these uh, two documents real quick. Actually, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the application. So by default, we have Microsoft Office installed on here. It's a full Microsoft Office suite, as you can see. Yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, delete these docs. Just drag them up and put them up into the uh, recycle bin. If I can get my hands right. So let's go ahead and drag some uh, files off the, our local desktop, the, that's the Mac. And what we'll do is we'll just uh, grab these two do Word documents and we'll drag them right into our uh, Six Flag desktop. And there they are. Let's go ahead and open one. As you can see, it's a regular full Microsoft Word implementation. So let's go ahead and uh, demo the print functionality in the Six Flag. We've installed a custom print driver called the Six Flag. When you click on print, it takes you back to the document, but instead of sending it directly to the printer, a window will pop up and then you just hit continue. And what it actually does is it renders it in a separate window on the local device as a PDF. From there, then the user can choose to do whatever they want to do. 
this case let's go ahead and actually print it to our local printer and off it goes so let's hop out a word really quickly we'll delete these documents I'll show another way to upload the documents real quick. So in addition to being able to drag them directly in, what we can actually do is we can sort of in a traditional upload document fashion go in and by clicking on that up arrow we can then browse to document one upload and then it gets uploaded and there it is. So this is the same document we just uploaded using the functionality with the buttons up on top. We can also download documents from from the virtual machine to the local device. And, basically just browse, browses through the file structure in uh, of the virtual machine and then just downloads it and so there you can see the document has been downloaded and it's in the downloads directory as indicated by in the lower left hand corner so we'll go ahead and uh, demo the copy and paste function right now So we actually have a dedicated clipboard, as you can see. It's the leftmost icon in the top uh, that looks like a clipboard. The reason we do that is because we actually allow for, you know, there's full copy-paste inside of the virtual machine, but that makes it difficult to copy and paste from the device into the virtual machine. Also, we want to protect that. So as you can see right here, there is a, they had the word abstract was on the clipboard, on the local clipboard anyway. So we were not able to copy in from the device. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll go up and launch the clipboard function. And we'll go ahead and enter the text right there that we want to add to the virtual machine's clipboard. We'll just paste it to the virtual clipboard. And then once that's done, we just come down into the Word document and click paste or whatever and there it is so that's how it works and it works in both directions so that's how we handle copy paste and it, it, it creates an element of intentionality about how we handle copy and paste we really do want to separate the virtual machine from your local device So let's go ahead and take a look at the internet. We have full internet access. The browsers work in the virtual machine like they do anywhere else. So as you can see, we'll go ahead and um, hop over to Google and run some search there. And there we go. Okay, let's just do a search on, I don't know, cloud or something like that. Okay. So we're back at the desktop. And now what we can go ahead and do is we'll go ahead and log off. And actually what's happening now is that the data that the user had gets basically re-encrypted, separated from the instance, and now that desktop instance has been destroyed. Now we can sign out, and that's it. There's absolutely no data local. Thanks for the demo, Pete. I really enjoyed that. I think uh, what you have here is a very disruptive and practical solution for a lot of people who are spending a tremendous amount of money on VDI that, uh, as I've said before, if you've read anything I've ever written, um, I believe that uh, web-based desktops are really the future of VDI. So let's continue the conversation. Um, tell us about licensing of your product. So one of the um, one of the benefits that uh, that configuration management brings in our environment. So I guess I should say one of the challenges that administrators have, desktop administrators have, is is configuration management and license compliance. It's a nightmare, and for for global organizations that have uh, teams that are highly distributed, 
it can really be a very difficult affair. Um, what we do is we say, look, you manage your licenses, but you assign them to a group. So say, for example, that you have an application that's a very expensive application that uh, you only have perhaps five licenses of. You can as basically install that application on a group and assign it to five users, and then now they just have access to it. And because they don't have access to the binaries, they don't have access to the installer, they can't copy it elsewhere, it's a non-issue. So it makes license compliance and asset management, configuration management, much simpler. Oh, very good. What about uh, viruses and malware? So I think I mentioned a little bit about you know the, the, the three components of security that we bring in. Uh, number one, what happens is when you log into the desktop, what we actually do is we remove all the credentials of the system. So essentially it's operating in a, in, in a, in a, in a scenario without credentials. Of course it has local system credentials that are associated with the operating system, but they're not known to anybody and they're ephemeral. In other words, they're changed upon login and, they're, and, and they really don't carry beyond the session. Second, the user's data is all stored on an encrypted volume. So in flight, the data is encrypted, and, and at rest, the data is encrypted. And then finally, what we actually do, which is somewhat radical, but it's, it's something that can be done uh, in, a, in, a, in a cloud orchestrated environment, is when you log out, we actually destroy your desktop. Your data is saved, but the desktop is destroyed. So if any uh, um, uh, APTs, like advanced persistent threats or malware, get onto the desktop, they're, they're gone at the end of the session which sort of brings in a little bit, and I, I didn't bring it up initially when, I, when, we, when we kicked off. This product was based on some very significant malware attacks that large organizations had faced or have faced over the last seven or eight years. And you know, we as, as consultants or in, in, in our consulting business had seen these attacks. And one of the things that we knew was that the desktop was going to continue to be attacked and, and the particular remote users were going to be attacked. And that it was a very, very, it was going to continue to be a sort of a game of whack-a-mole that organizations were going to face. So what we figured was, if the desktop can never be fully secured, what would be the mecha mechanism of mitigating that? Well, there's a lot of different mitigating technologies. There's whitelisting of applications, but what we do is at the end of the day, we just destroy the desktop and give you a brand new, fresh one next time you log in. So users can't install their own software? That is correct. Users cannot install their own software. And that is something that, um, uh, in, in our instance, we're finding that the because this is being driven heavily by security and compliance management, this is something that our, our customers are very, actually, are very open to. They actually want to know what kind of applications they're facing because then it also eliminates the issue of, of, of license management and liability associated with compliance. Right. I was going to say piracy is a, a big problem in some countries and, and some companies. And so that would sort of alleviate the whole piracy it, issue. It makes it go away. It makes it go away. That's very good. So what about um, Active Directory integration? So we... Uh, we uh, support full authentication against an organization's Active Directory. Uh, in addition to our own internal authentication mechanism, we will support the authentication uh, using SAML uh, going against uh, Active Directory. The machines that the desktops that are running, that the, the, the user is using, is not an Active Directory machine. And that is an intentional choice that we make. Number one is it makes it easier for us to destroy the machine because it doesn't have to be joined to, to Active Directory. And number two, we believe that actually if we're only using a few groups, you know, we can use local group policies to set the policies uh, that you would want inside the desktop. And then we have our additional security policies that we uh, apply outside of the machine. And so the advantages that Active Directory brings, we we believe that we can offset those. And some of the risks that are associated with having a remote desktop that is not at, you know connecting to the network and not checking in for updated security patches while it may still be a member of the of the domain, um, those uh, those are eliminated. One final question is. What about user training? You know, the Linux desktop has never really caught on because it's so unfamiliar with people. And, you know, people love Mac, but it's so different than Windows. 
how does your desktop fit in? So our desktop is a regular Windows desktop, and that's funny you should mention that, Ken, because that was one of the big things that we realized was one of the reasons why you know certain you know pure web-based office productivity suites, uh, you know Google Docs is probably the the best known one. One of the reasons why it has not gained as much traction in, in the enterprises as, as as I think that they would have hoped is because of the, the sort of the metaphor and the fact that there's some user training and, and comfort levels that just have not you know seeped into the to the broader user base. Our environment looks it, because it is a regular traditional Windows desktop. So there's no, the, the learning curve is very little. There's the only thing that really a user will have to learn is uh, file management in and out of their virtual machine, uh, copy and paste, and print. That's it. Wow, that sounds very good. Well, thank you for uh, joining us today. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm uh, happy with uh, our progress, and um, I wish you the best of luck in your in your business with the sixth flag. And if you could tell us now uh, how to engage your company. So uh, you can reach us at, at www.thesixflag.com. Uh, you can send us an email uh, at info at thesixflag.com. Or you can give us a call, 855-873-9537. Thanks. It's been a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Ken. It's good to be here. Thank you. I am Ken Hess, and this has been a video cast with Peter Kofod of the Sixth Flag. And until next time.